The mystic learns the inner secret from the ray of divine love. The treasure of anyone is empowered from this ruby. The meaning of the divan of rose is known to the morning bird and none else. Not every page is read. Not every page read is understood. I offered the two worlds to the dysfunctional, ruined heart. Other than your love, it considered everything else useless, ephemeral, transient. That time has passed now for me to worry about what people say about me. Even the Sharia per police is aware of my hidden intoxication. Our beloved did not deem appropriate our comfort for this time. Our beloved did not deem appropriate our comfort for this time. Otherwise, he would have, he would have to be concerned or worried for us. He turns stone and mud to ruby and agate with the grace of his glance. For those who know the worth of the wind of Yemen, and I have to explain this, the wind of Yemen or divine breath is about the story of a lover of God from Yemen who became a lover of Mo Prophet Muhammad without seeing him. Or, and on hearing about him, he became a follower. Uh, Muhammad said that there was a heavenly breeze from, uh, once he heard about him, he said there was a heavenly breeze blowing from Yemen. So he turned stone and mud to ruby and agate with the grace of his glance for those who know the worth of the wind of Yemen. If you have tried to learn about the mysteries of love from the book of intellect, I'm afraid you will not be able to know this subject through academic research. Bring wine, for this world is not going to be fooled by the beauty of the rose in the garden. Those who know the pillage of the autumn wind know that the world is ephemeral. Hafez, who inspired to create these soul-nourishing verses, got his inspiration and skill from the mentoring and discipline of his teacher, Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Jay nice. Baba. That needs work. There, there's a few places I can see already. I need to evolve it, refine it. Oh. <clears throat> Very but, but you, you translate that yourself? I do. Wow, wonderful. Very I have been doing it for uh, quite a while, but during this COVID time, I'm on, I'm on uh, office adrenaline. <laughs> Overdrive. Yes. <clears throat> Rumi said, by the time the intellect has selected a camel for the pilgrimage to Mecca, love has already climbed Mount Sinai. Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> so true. In the, in the raging storm of love, what is the intellect but a mere gnat? <laughs> can't, mm. hold a, can't, hold a, uh, can't hold up. Did you hear Gohair's talk this morning? No, I didn't. Yeah, it was wonderful. And, and one thing she said that kind of rang um, the effort and grace bell in my heart was she said, Baba um, told him, or I, mean, I can't paraphrase, but something about uh, in order for Baba to help you, you have to make the first effort. Yeah. So when you watch it, listen for that it was beautiful yeah. you know we can just sit idly and do nothing and there's yeah. you know god isn't going to push himself on us but we have to make that first effort jay baba <clears throat> okay <clears throat> well let me mention at the beginning if anybody <clears throat> wants to stay sometime after seven o'clock 
Stu uh, Baker is going to lead us in a heart, a short, uh, heart-centered, <clears throat> love-filled meditation. It's well worth it. It's very, very moving, and he he guides you very uh, in a very relaxed way into this meditation. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I've said this a number of times, and I say it from time to time that this approach to Baba that Darwin has talked about is one of the major uh, uh, ways of following Baba, but it's not the only way. There are uh, many ways, and there's some that are very quite different. I mean, this is a little more of a conscious journey toward Baba, but there are some Baba people who are very close to Baba and some of his mandala and everything. They, and their inner, their inner love and dedication, or their outer life is is a is a reflection of their inner love and dedication to Baba, and they don't necessarily <clears throat> uh, think too much about the me the inner me mechanics of all this. So, uh, you know, in case, uh, <clears throat> uh, like I say, there's some people. One time we had a meeting. <clears throat> this is in in uh, Myrtle Beach, and there was one person who's a long time Baba person and a caretaker on the center. And at the end of our session, he said, I don't know what you people are talking about, <laughs> and, but this guy is so loving, you know, but it's, so there are different ways. Darwin is, D Darwin is great that he put this particular, <clears throat> with all of the major themes of following Baba in this book, you know, it's, it's been uh, so helpful. <clears throat> now, um one thing that um there's another path which is called the tech path to baba the silicon valley's version <clears throat> of how to follow baba so uh, listen closely because ferris day can give us a report on that i'll be two people then <clears throat> yeah. there's two players in this skit and they're, um they're the tech support guy and the customer tech support Yes, how can I help you, customer? Well, after much consideration, I've decided to install love. Can you guide me through the process? Tech support. Yes, I can help you. Are you ready to proceed, customer? Well, I'm not very technical, but I think I'm ready. What do I do first? The first step is to open your heart, says tech support. Have you located your heart? Well, yeah, but the, there are several other programs running right now. It's, is it okay to install love while they are running? What programs are running, ma'am? Let's see. I have past hurt, self-esteem, grudge, and resentment running right now. Tech support. No problem. Love will gradually erase past hurt from your current operating system. It may remain in your permanent memory, but will no longer disrupt other programs. Love will eventually override low self-esteem with a module of its own called high self-esteem. However, you have to completely turn off grudge and resentment. Those programs prevent love from being properly installed. Can you turn those off? I don't know how to turn them off. Can you help? Tell me, can you tell me how? With pleasure. Go to your start menu and select forgiveness. Do this as many times as necessary until grudge and resentment have been completely erased. Okay, done. Love has started installing itself. Uh-oh, I have an error message already. It says error, program not run on external components. What should I do now? Don't worry, ma'am. In non-technical terms, it simply means you have to love yourself before you can love others. Pull down self-acceptance, then click on the following files. Forgive self, realize your worth, and acknowledge your limitations. Customer. Got it. Hey, my heart is filling up with new files. Smile is playing on my monitor and peace and contentment are copying themselves all over my heart. Is this normal? Tech support. Yes, ma'am. That means love is installed and running. 
One more thing before we hang up. This love program is freeware. You're welcome to share it with others. Jay Baba. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> almost everybody knows the routine and uh, Angela's gonna choose somebody to read. <clears throat> you can refuse if you like, pass if you want. And, um, <clears throat> and then afterwards, I'll read a section and afterwards if there are any questions or any Examples. Examples are helpful too because uh, Darwin <clears throat> Darwin wrote this. You know, it's 120 pages, but uh, I think if he had more time, he would have uh, given like examples of these things uh, to fill out a little bit. So, any examples uh, or sharing your own experience of of the things that are that Darwin's talking about. So, we begin. What's the page number? It is page 85. Antidote to the worry syndrome. We must keep our minds clear about what we are programming. Our subconscious mind is like a giant, all-powerful genie that complies with our general thought patterns. If we worry, the genie says, yes, master, and magically produces something for us to worry about. We therefore think my worry was justified because the very thing I worried about happened. It creates a syndrome where we continue to worry and something worrisome appears. The antidote to worry is trust and faith in God. Therefore, in order to overcome worry, we have to conjure up more faith, more trust. Our hearts have to become stronger in faith instead of quivering in worry and fear. Counteracting worry through building our faith and trust opens up a vast new area of possibilities for self-improvement within and also in our outer life. But mainly it opens up the way for spiritual unfoldment, for growing closer to God, to reality. Mayor Baba says, live more and more in the present, which is ever beautiful and stretches away beyond the limits of the past and the future. If at all you must worry, let it be how to remember me constantly. This is a worthwhile worry because it will bring about the end of worry. Think of me more and more and all your worries will disappear into the nothing they really are. My will works out to awaken you to this. If we really believe that Baba is our dearest friend, that he is omnipotent and that he is on our side and working for us, we will stop worrying and we'll trust him. As he said to us in 1962, what is there to worry about? Nothing, so don't worry. Let Baba do the worrying. He enjoys working things out. There is no need for both you and Baba worrying. If you are going to worry, then Baba won't worry. So stop worrying and leave everything to Baba to take care of. When you do not worry, it becomes Baba's responsibility. By putting our full trust in Baba, we are placing our lives completely in his hands and daring to not worry. This is something we can learn to do. This can be a part of our programming work. I might have said this last time, but um, <clears throat> I'm using what Baba said for us to do in the morning, repeat. Bob, I now begin entrusting all thoughts, words, and deeds to you. And in the evening, Bob, I now entrust to you every thought, word, and deed, good and bad. And I, I mentioned I've, I've done this for years, but then reading more carefully where he said do it for five minutes at a time. I'm really working on this, and I find during the day I want to re repeat it more. You know, I think it's like Darwin saying when Baba told them, I guess in 54, uh, dress yourself with Baba in the morning, then at noon, readjust the Baba coat, at five, do it again, and then at, at the end of the day, um, you know, connect with Baba again. And Darwin found he wanted to remember Baba all the time so that he wouldn't miss, um, <clears throat> You know, catch, catching, being with Bob at the right times. And I'm, I'm just finding in doing this practice, 
um, it's making me want to be in that place all the time, that place of entrusting with Baba. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, entrusting, entrusting um, things to Baba and not worrying um, and allowing Baba to worry about it is something that I'm excited to try. I've been having this experience recently as I'm beginning another semester of grad school and, and going back to teaching full time and uh, some several other things that I'm trying to carry all at the same time. And uh, I'm really excited. I, I've been feeling so much easier going into my beginning of the school year than I ever have before. So much less stress uh, because I'm really trying not to worry and giving, letting, letting Baba take care of it. And so I'm excited to keep trying, keep, keep this momentum going we'll, and, uh, and keep trying for as long as I can. And then the other thing I wanted to share is one of the things I realized is I really have to be flexible. I have to try to also allow myself to be flexible as I'm doing that. Because anytime I, um, in order to not worry and leave things the bubble, I kind of have to roll with the punches and, and, and let things be as, as they are sometimes, you know? Um, so I just wanted to add that to the, to the important list of things to do when trying to give things to Baba's. You gotta be flexible and, and roll with the punches. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thanks, Jake. <clears throat> I just wanted to say I like that one line toward the end that says, daring not to worry. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, uh, proactive. It, yeah, yeah, I mean, and it does feel like it does feel, for me, it feels like I'm having to, to dare not to worry. I mean, there's a, it feels, I mean, I, I, I don't sense that it's true, but it feels that it's true, that I have, that it's a, that it's a risk somehow. So it, there, in a risk, then there's daring something, you know, and that's what it, I, I, that's kind of where, where that really felt potent to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Angela. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I love that if we worry, Baba won't. And if we don't worry, Baba will take it. If we give it to Baba, Baba will take it. And I'm, my father was a really intense worrier, and he would kind of make himself sick. And, and so I was a worrier. And one reflection is that I'm, I have a pretty quiet mind, and I didn't for many years, but I, I do believe it's because of Baba. It's because of my connection with Baba. And, of course, there's great stories that fill us. So there are great stories of some people who, who were worriers and then contact with Baba, and it was, like, gone. And also, I have had sort of... Psychic, I would say, psychic experiences with my father. I mean, my father worried so much that as a, like a 45-year-old, after I traveled home from visiting him, and I didn't call him right away, he called the cops on me, you know, to make sure it was okay. Of course, the cop was like, yeah, I know, my mother does the same, you know. Um, so we joked about it. But, um, you know, not, not calling the cops, but worries about him, and, you know, but which – sort of understandable, but, um, but I've had, since my father passed, I got really clear, clear communication from him that he was with Baba and he was actually was the, you know, the, he was really happy. And this is a person I could not talk to about. He never knew about Baba. In fact, he would go like, you can't go to India again. You know, there's all these terrible things happening there. I mean, I could not talk to him about Baba ever. He was very anti-spiritual. And I got this real sense that, that he went to Baba and um, uh, which is kind of more, more than I want to go into here, but it's like, you know, our families are affected <laughs> even if they're not conscious of it, you know, in this life. But um, you know, that, that, you know, thinking about this worry, it's like, Oh, that was released from my father too. So Baba really has in my life, really helped me and those I love with worry. And I'm very grateful. Thank you. Well, let me mention one thing that um, you might find interesting. Uh, the line there, live more and more in the present, which is ever beautiful and stretches away 
beyond the limits of the past and the future. And I was in Mandalay Hall with uh, Marwan Jessawala, and I said, what does that mean to you? And he said, you can only find Baba in the present. You won't find him in the past or the future. He said, people spend so much time thinking about the past and the future, and they let them slip away right in front of them. So I thought, wow, that, that really uh, <clears throat> hit me deeply because I, I haven't asked the question. And, and uh, <clears throat> so amazing, if you don't want to worry, get to the present by hook or crook. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be there with Baba, it's in the present, yeah. We got another hand up for Marsha. Marsha? You need to unmute, there you go. Okay, I went to India the first time in 1994 and I was there on silence day and I did the Dooney fire and I've been a worrier for a long time. <clears throat> so I put that in the Dooney fire and now I'm 74 and it took me that long to stop worrying, but it does, it takes a while. But anyway, last, I know last December I got lost in the woods and, and I actually found my way back by 11 o'clock and I got on the wrong side of the fence. And now I'm living in a new place and I just moved in and I'm not afraid anymore. I actually went out in a thunderstorm today. So it works, but it's just, it's when it's ready, the door opens. Otherwise, you know, but you just have to have total faith in God, you know, and, and that trust is really true. If you, wor if you worry, he doesn't have to worry for you. So just be happy. That's all he wants you to do is to be happy, you know. Be like little lights all over the place, happy. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah. <clears throat> and she did get in by 11 o'clock. I can uh, affirm that. <laughs> how did I get back in through all the gate glitz? I didn't know how I found my way in. I was like looking at all the houses and Christmas lights, and I thought that everybody was going to Florida for the winter, and I heard dogs barking, so I tried barking so somebody would hear me, and my phone was out. So it was like, it was scary, but I wasn't scared because I knew that I had to find my way by myself, you know, but Baba was with me, you know? Yeah. So I said, if I could do that and find my way there, I don't have to be lost anywhere if I just call on Baba, you know? So it works. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, lucky me, <laughs> lucky you, lucky everybody, yeah. Okay, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Mayor Baba says, among the many things the aspirant needs to cultivate, there are few that are as important as cheerfulness, enthusiasm, and equipoise. Just as when we worry, we are supplied with worrisome and unhappy circumstances, so too, if we are cheerful and do not choose to worry, we are programming things for us to be cheerful about. When we program good cheer, the, cause, the causes for it will be supplied. It changes our inner and outer environment because it raises our consciousness and does not let worry which is fear into our consciousness. Jesus said, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This means that if we are of good cheer, we too will overcome the world. Be of good cheer and you will overcome everything. People do not take this literally. They take their worries literally. Being of good cheer is a magical thing because one can immediately bypass all obstacles. Baba within us is helping us in our efforts to disentangle from the world, and we must accept the divinely magical effect of his overcoming of the world in us, which is his grace. I feel like um, it's easier said than done for me. Uh, I mean, I could just paste a smile on my face and act happy, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, in the middle of a pandemic, it's not just that I'm, I'm in like a nearly constant state of anxiety. And my whole life has pretty much been destroyed. And so it's, it's hard to be of good cheer. I'm trying now. Try the meditation afterwards, we'll work. <laughs> we'll send you some cheer. And Janaki? Yes, uh, I have found that I had to practice that one uh, like with a lot of effort, but especially at work 
when I go to work and I have to deal with, I take care of a lot of people and things and, and I don't always feel good every day and I don't feel cheerful every day, but it's like a commandment now for me that no matter what, when somebody, when I speak with somebody, I am cheerful and it always lifts my spirit because they're usually, they respond so wonderfully, not all the time, but usually, and it just lifts me up and, it, and it's just this whole self-fulfilling prophe prophecy, just like Darwin was speaking about in the book, in the passage. Beautiful. So true. <clears throat> yeah, that is great. And Heidi? Yeah, hi. Um, it always helps me to, to release worry, um, asking Bob to let me know how he's working it out. Um, and somehow I feel comforted by that, that he's working it out, but he's going to let me know how he creatively did it. And it's always fun when he does. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the other day I was waiting for um, um, my uh, sibling who's... Um, has a pretty challenging uh, health and mental health issue. And um, <clears throat> I was really worried that she wasn't following the yellow brick road and she would get, she would test positive for COVID. And it did, it did happen uh, yesterday. Uh, so anyway, by Bob's grace, um, she miraculously got herself in the hospital. And <clears throat> um, then I was worried the social worker took over and I thought, they're not going to do it right. They're going to discharge her prematurely and this and that. And I said, wait a minute, let Baba work it out. So I was really surprised how Baba worked it out. <laughs> um, but he, he created a situation where um, she put herself in a state where she had to have one-on-one -on -one staff with uh, wrist restraints. And that was the only way to keep her there. So they're giving her, I know, they're giving her everything that she needed for months that she couldn't have access to that I was trying to advocate for her to have. Um, and it's, I know Baba is there with her uh, and he's taking care of it, but I would never have imagined that it would work out like that. So I just want to share that with you. Because sometimes it's for, for me growing up in a, in a culture that is known for worry with a capital W you weren't living if you didn't worry and you weren't expressing caring if you didn't worry. You were aloof and a horrible person. I mean, it was just a real balancing act to try to figure out, uh, and, and in social work too, how to be enthusiastic and cheerful, but still express to folks that you were very much caring for their situation and about them. Uh, so, uh, you know, letting Bob work it out, but he's allowed me to ask him for the details and he gives it to me and it's, it's beautiful for me and it does help. But if you want to know, he'll tell you how he's working it out. And it's like, you know, it boggles the mind, but it's so amazing to be, you know, privy to that if you allow yourself and I can't easily allow myself, but when I do, it's amazing. Beautiful, Heidi. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. And Cindy. The line in this that when we program good cheer, the causes of good cheer will be supplied. And, and I, I've had an experience of that just today. For, for the last five months, there have been times that the only good cheer or wonder I could attach to was how the clouds look. And I've been amazed, like, have I gone 55 years without really looking at the clouds? Are the clouds more spectacular than they've ever been now? Or am I just watching the clouds and being fascinated with the clouds? And I was driving back from DC. I went just for an overnight for a spiritually distant bat mitzvah, which was awesome. And, uh, and our spiritually distant, socially distant bat mitzvah was not spiritually distant. And Driving up 95, the clouds were incredible. And then I just had this experience from Baba of a pathway through the layers of my mind to the portal that opens up into, I would say, my soul or my heart <clears throat> and how to get there. Like almost like how to get out of those, those crazy thoughts. 
um, whatever they might be. And then when we, this was the first time that I have been kind of quiet with the moment of silence, I followed that path and went into such a state of deep space of just whatever. So I'm just amazed at like trying to, what I could find good cheer about was clouds. And today just had a rush of really amazing experience for relieving and enlivening and everything experience. Wonderful. <clears throat> you know, that reminds me of a, <clears throat> of a quote I found by uh, Erich's bedroom. But it kind of reminds me, what you said reminds me, it says, live in the world, this isn't a quote by Erich, this is one that he had collected. Live in the world like an ant. The world contains a mixture of truth and untruth, sugar and sand. Be an ant and take the sugar. So <clears throat> cherry pick things that make you feel better. <clears throat> uh, too, much, uh, too much of the news so <clears throat> gets to be kind of, uh, kind of grainy and sandy. Could you repeat that, Jeff? Okay. Yeah, it must have struck Erich as very meaningful. <clears throat> Live in the world like an ant. The world contains a mixture of truth and untruth, sugar and sand. Be an ant and take the sugar. That's and that, that kind of reminds me of Darwin because he would he would take the best out of life and not go rummaging around in the landfill. <laughs> and Ira? Okay, you know, things are pretty tough with the pandemic. And this is how one way I, this is one way I deal with it is, you know, Jesus Christ has said, as you believe, you are, okay? So if you believe with feeling you're taken care of, and you believe that with gratitude, oh, I'm being taken care of with gratitude, then, then that will happen, okay? So have the gratitude that you're being taken care of, okay? Now, one more thing that also helps is that um, if you have anxiety, just say Baba's name as much as you could, and, and that would get out of the anxiety and being and put you in the present. Okay, say Baba. Say Baba, thanks, Ira. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, part of why I'm going here is because I, I wanted to keep going. Be, um, when I'm reading this paragraph, I'm either I didn't get there before, but it just stands out as maybe the so-called promise Mayor Baba gives that be of good cheer and you will overcome everything. And just like the lady had had that comedy routine, I want that to be installed in me because I've been in a very dark place for way for just an exceedingly long time. And what I've learned a technique is to look into the, it comes from a personal success coach to look in the past at what I can find gratitude with and look at the future to see what I think I can accomplish. And I've done that in order to feel good because being of good cheer is like I'm allergic to it, unfortunately. And um, periodically when I can remember gratitude for what I have, and it's something I, I remember from Erich and I translate it. It's in um, The Real Treasure where he talks about if you want to, and this is paraphrasing, if you want to find excuses, you'll find thousands. And if you want to find solutions, you'll find thousands too. It depends on where the focus is. So it's challenging for me to focus on gratitude and joy. But my hope is that, for example, with gratitude, the more I focus on Little by little by little, I find more to find gratitude for. So um, with me too, I find a great challenge being of, no, I don't want to make it sound like it's a great challenge, like I do it. 
um, I find if I'm in an interview or if I'm in a place where I feel a need to be of good cheer, then I can be. And I can crack jokes and I can be really funny. <clears throat> but it's a challenge. And, um, you know, it's something I try and differentiate is worry as opposed to anxiety and nervousness where I think I recovered from chronic worry a couple of years ago and it's maybe a holiday for me now. Um, but being a good cheer is, is another challenge. Um, I'm going through um, a spiritual process like I've been through before, but this is a longer one and a deeper one where I'm throwing in negativities aware, like I'm powerless over my negativity to hope to turn that around, to hopefully get to be in a place of good cheer. So it almost sounds like it's either an order that I can't quite follow yet or a promise, be of good cheer and you will overcome everything. I'd like to think it's a promise to say you are, if you do one thing, you'll get another. If you be of good cheer, then you will overcome everything. And my cerebral brain wants to figure out, um, gulping saying is the how. So how is probably none of my darn business. And I think it's not a good idea for me to figure out how's that going to be pulled off to just let it happen or not let it. But um, um, I don't want to say let it happen like it's really something I have anything to do with. But maybe um, like we said at the beginning of the day, like raise it up to Mayor Baba and give it to him. It has happened more and more and more where when I have a situation I'm nervous about and I just don't want to deal with, I just either with my hands or with my arms or just metaphorically throw it up in the air and say, just take this. I don't want to deal with it and just move forward. And I have to say the results are usually, I think pretty good. They're pretty good. Um, and yeah, I'm thinking about one example, but maybe another time, but I just, I wanted to weigh in on it. This one is like so exceedingly important to me. So I wanted to see what other people, maybe if they had examples of how they overcome dismalism to be of good cheer in the outcomes. And I'll pass with that. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. And for Rishi? Yes. Um, as I'm listening to um, the talk about COVID and our worries, as if we didn't have enough personal worries, now we have to do global worries. But um, the thought occurred to me that um, Baba must have thought very highly of us, his lovers now at this particular time to give us this big of a challenge to face. And the question that popped into my head was, I wonder how the Mandali would have, if this had occurred during the Mandali era, you know, how sweet of them to all leave us all here to deal with this ginormous mountain of a worry, quote unquote. But honestly, I think he must have really thought very highly of us to give us such a tremendously beautiful challenge, which is a tremendously great spiritual push if we take it that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Thank God it's not a nuclear war. <laughs> yeah, it's a great perspective. And Jeff Asbill. I look at this from a human being to human being relationship, as well as Jeff with himself and Baba. I took a course a while back called Compassion and Communication. And what I have found really something that puts me into being, in good, being of good cheer is empathy. So when I'm with someone, as much as I can be aware and conscious, I will respond to their need by their tone and by exactly what they're saying by trying to be extremely sensitive to what a person's need is being expressed and the tone, I am 
really in an empathetic kind of compassionate communication with that person. To be of good cheer is such a beautiful way to live your life anyway. When I'm with my lonesome self, a lot of the time I'm very grateful for all the blessings that I have from Baba. Because I think the mind is such a trickster. I think all of our minds and hearts runneth over with so much gratitude for so many things, but we forget. So I guess what I'm saying, I just realized that to be compassionate with my own mind, when it begins to sort of drop out of good cheer and say, hey, Jeff, you know, you forgot that you're loved and you love Baba. You forgot that you are love. Be love. Be love. Beautiful. Share it with everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> Very nice. And Anthony. Hi, Peter, two, two of the things I found helped me the most, uh, nature has been a huge part of my path. And it's just amazing how things can change when you get outside. I found when I'm in the house too much in the four walls, it's I don't know. I, I noticed that it is a little bit more difficult to get elated versus, you know, even opening the window in your house or taking a walk outside at sunset or in the sunrise. It's absolutely amazing what it does when you're around God's creation, you know, when you're feeling the breeze, when you're seeing the birds, when you're seeing the trees. And I mean, even just in most poetry, the, I mean, I mean, not most, but quite a bit of poetry. There, there's so much nature imagery in it. And even just hearing about it lifts you up. So at the hardest times in my life and path, you know, being outside on trails or just going out to the water somewhere, it, that was the key for me of being able to release those most difficult places was just taking it, you know, taking those difficult spaces to Baba and, you know, to God in the beauty of nature. And it, it just seemed to heal the heart. And the other thing that's helped tremendously, and, you know, not that I'm able to do it all the time, but I, I find the more I'm able to smile, it does completely change your energy. So I, I feel like I, I can't maintain it the entire day, but as much as I can, I try to remember, even if it's washing the dishes, if it is taking a walk out in the woods, if it's, you know, showering, whatever it is, even if it feels completely fake, it seems like the act of even trying to make yourself smile, like, you know, it just, it does something. It actually does start to change your energy. And I found more and more that it starts to feel less fake and you go to do it and then you genuinely have joy come up. So yeah, I think for sure, ma making myself smile and staying connected to nature have been two of the biggest joy producing things that have eased worry in my life. Uh, thank you. Yeah, wonderful. <clears throat> and Janaki? Hi, I, I, what, what Anthony and Jeff just said are just spot on. I love that. Thank you. Um, and I guess I, I just wanted to add one more item that comes to my mind constantly is that Baba is giving us as much love as he can, as, love, as much love as we can take in all the time. And that he's also got everything. You know, it's like he's doing the best thing for everybody at every single moment. So I have to just trust that all the time. And the more I do that and the less I worry about or think about my bad mood or my depression or my whatever it is and just really give it over to Baba and then concentrate on other people, you know, the giving, just making others happy and, and smiling and presenting not a garlicky face, but a smile. Um, it just transforms if you just get out of your head, if you just stop thinking about yourself 
And I'm not saying that you don't, that I never think about myself and I never think about my feeling and I never process that. It's not quite where that's at. Um, but just remembering and trusting that Bob has got it all and that everything is for everybody's best. Beautiful. Yeah, no, it's, <clears throat> I think what Jeff said there too about empathy if you uh, if, the, if you can get out of yourself, your world is expanded, <clears throat> and the larger your world is, the more <clears throat> the the more joy and and cheerfulness you have. I mean, if you can get if you're just living in a little shack yourself, it gets kind of stifling. But if you can get out of uh, open the doors and go out and see others and get into their lives it's hard to feel cramped up. You feel, uh, it enlarges who you are. And the larger you feel, I think the better you feel, the more expansive and, and, and elevated you feel. We're not careful we could be talking about this uh, till the end of the, uh, the session here, but uh, I know that for me personally, things pass. And so I get the, I'm, I'm worried about something in particular and Get, you know, old age now has gotten me to the point where I, I realize it's, I'm not going to feel the same way about this at a future date. Hopefully it's going to be, it just might, I'll have a different outlook and I can change that worry pretty quickly often. So uh, just working through it, having, giving yourself a chance to uh, have a different outlook on it um, and maybe work through it and you know give it to baba so anyway jay baba yeah so true so the sense of humor is the thing that i think of especially when i'm alone a lot sometimes i it, i i have a hard time realizing that i need to have something to kind of move my body inside so that the tension and stuff doesn't build up or i don't fall into kind of a negative space. And so, um, and I find I can get myself out of a negative space a lot just by acting out in front of Baba. I go up to his picture and I start going, what are you doing with this world? And, you know, until I just finally, yeah. you know, get myself, you know, come on, Baba, get on it. You know, it's like, I just exaggerate and, and uh, have fun. <laughs> and finally, uh, you know, at least it gets the tension out and I'm in more of a space to take things a little lighter. Beautiful. And I think he gets a real kick out of that. <laughs> yeah, that's delightful. And Prakash. Hey, J. Bob, everybody. Beautiful thoughts, and uh, I appreciate everybody's comments on this. Uh, I <clears throat> just recall having heard Erich once talking about cheerfulness. Uh, somebody asked uh, Erich, what do you mean by that? And I can't paraphrase exactly what he said, but his, uh, generally, this is the way it goes. He basically said, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, a facial expression that sort of communicates what you feel inside. I mean, being happy, being cheerful. I may have some limitations of my own. You know, I may not be the type to, I mean, show that smile on my face. But what he basically said was, you have to have that inner warmth in your heart. And that itself uh, can help <laughs> in the sense... I mean, I, I again recall, I mean, I don't know if Jonathan Burroughs is here, but, uh, you know, he, his smile is so contagious, but that's what he can do very naturally. And for somebody like me, maybe I have buck teeth and I don't want to, you know, I can't show that expression on my face. So I guess I wonder if uh, uh, <coughs> um, uh, Darwin here is talking about having that inner warmth, you know, and that radiates uh, that cheerfulness, even though uh, the corresponding expression on the face may not be there. Jay Baba. Yeah, thank you. Yep. And Robin? 
Um, I love all the comments. They're wonderful. And I love what Jonathan said. I totally believe everything is for the good. Um, and this might sound a little weird in the context of what everybody's been saying, but like this morning at the end of um, Goher's talk, uh, she was saying how she got to a very, very difficult place, maybe depressed and thinking, I don't know if she was going to end her life, but I just want to remember that so many people that have come to Baba have come to him at wanting to commit suicide and all of a sudden having it be just such a transformation. So, I mean, I don't think we need to totally worry about getting uh, sad. I think it's great to, you know, make every effort to be positive and upbeat and all that, but it's, it's all part of the whole journey. That's all I wanted to say, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Robin. Yeah, Anthony? There's just a real quick comment when Jeff was talking about, you know, focusing on others and that getting you out of the smallness of the box of your world. And um, when you said that, Jeff, I just immediately thought that's that's why nature feels so liberating to me going out there because it's, I would feel that I would be sitting in the house and I'm just looking at my thoughts and world and then you get out there and all of a sudden your consciousness turns onto the clouds, it turns onto the trees and you're, you're just aware of a completely different, um, you're just aware of the bigness of everything of creation and you're, you're not on your own world. And, um, it's a great thing. You know, I think most people feel that to some degree out in, out in nature. And I, I would notice that even when I go to the beach here in Florida and I would think like, wow, you know, even if all the people out here today aren't into spirituality, like everybody's just kind of like at their best out here, you know, they're focused on the waves, they're splashing in the water and they're just not in their world. You know, everybody's just, um, you know, kind of beyond that and enjoying the bigness and the beauty of that. So yeah, I just want to say thank you. I thought of that when you yeah. mentioned it. Good. <laughs> Take the sugar and not the sand. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your spirits up. Initially, we are bogged down with worry. We must strive to be cheerful. Start with a cheerful face, a light heart. It is up to us to make the choice to be cheerful. Allowing cynical and negative thoughts to enter our consciousness lowers our spirits and contributes to low self-esteem. And getting involved in the petty things of life leads to depression. In a certain sense, we must ignore the petty things in life that keep getting thrown at us. We do what we must, such as carry out our duties and continue to pay our karmic debts but we choose to have an attitude of cheerfulness while doing them. The formula, don't worry, be happy, is the key to happiness. Oh my gosh, someone's at the door, weird. <laughs> um, in other words, you trust the master to provide everything. By following such a simple formula, great changes are brought about. It puts us on a spiral to a higher level of freedom. Simply by keeping cheerful, a centrifugal force is created which repels negative forces. It changes out focus it changes our focus from the conditional level of all the opposites and everything being dependent on one condition or another and we become free free of worry i recall in 1952 witnessing baba's parting with kitty davy one of his close western disciples when he suddenly informed her that he wanted her to remain at the newly established 
Mayher Spiritual Center and help its director, Elizabeth Patterson, instead of going back to India with him. He made a simple hand gesture, fingers join, hand and arm moving straight up, meaning keep your spirits up. We must do all we can to keep our spirits up, our self-esteem high, and allow Baba to work through us. So accentuate the positive, no matter what. Refuse to allow worry to dominate your thoughts and feelings. Instead, allow happiness to predominate so that you are programming happiness. So what's that gesture that Baba made? What's the gesture? Does anyone know the gesture? Is mm. that? It would be something similar to like pulling upward, but I don't know exactly. Yeah. Well, that must have been a shock for her. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> she had to go into another gear altogether. Wow. Not to go back with Baba. She was the perfect person to be there for all of us. Oh, yeah. You yeah. had no idea. I mean, it was <clears throat> 15 years later when her special role with all of us began. And and she was a cheerful, uplifting person. Yeah. <clears throat> well, she thought of other people so much. Yeah. She would, yeah. Causeless cheerfulness. Pain toward my own. Yeah. Aim toward causeless cheerfulness, which is bliss. It is our real state and it is our destiny. Baba says that bliss exists everywhere. Everything is bliss. If you want causeless cheerfulness, allow it to predominate within yourself by lifting your spirits and being cheerful. This is a step in the right direction. I once knew a middle-aged man who had a humble job at the supermarket. He would often say, I'm always cheerful, even when I'm miserable. Detachment such as this man had is an essential part of attaining causeless cheerfulness. But it is something that happens automatically, and we should not concentrate on it. Instead, get attached to real bliss. Keeping our spirits up, being of good cheer, elevates our consciousness. It changes the illusory environment of our minds. It lifts up our spirits. It lifts our spirits up to our heart and eliminates the heart center. And if it's carried out seriously, it brings us into the kingdom of God. We begin to think in terms of timelessness rather than existing on a timeline. We experience a sense of fulfillment and completeness we come to realize that we are spirit. I mean, he would say that not have your happiness really contingent on anything external or even internal. That's, that's uh, inner, inner attainment, uh, inner work. right off the, the Bliss Street station on the Flushing IRT out of Times Square. And uh, the local movie house was the Bliss Theater. So I've had the word bliss in my consciousness since I was just a little kid. And maybe that's what kept me going as far as I know. I've, I've always been a pretty cheerful guy to begin with. And uh, it paid off being, being an excellent salesman. So uh, being miserable is something I don't like. I, I, I know immediately when I'm miserable and I just do something to get myself out of it. <laughs> Even if it's just <laughs> around the corner, you know. Okay, that's all I want to say. And Jeff, well, Jeff was born right off Bliss Street Station too. <laughs>
Follow your bliss. <laughs> Follow your bliss. Joseph Campbell. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm out. Just that Bliss Street that Jack spoke about. I used to go to Bliss Street every day for a number of years at a school I used to work in. And I remember the very first time going to the school and I had to get off at Bliss Street. And I said, Bliss Street? That's so... But I, it was so wonderful, Jack. So, yeah, Bliss Street is a very special memory. i, I got to say one other little thing. As we are talking, I'm thinking about this. There were two people in my life that were continually in good cheer. It was this bus driver that used to pick a bunch of us kids up on the corner going to Russell Sage Junior High School in Queens. And this bus driver, every morning when I got on the bus, he would always say, good morning, you look just like Joey Brown. And I smiled to him, and I didn't even know who Joey Brown was till years later. Also, I had a mailman when I was my first apartment in Manhattan, and his name was Steve. It just was so uncanny. He was so consistently, just like the bus driver, always in good cheer. I never had the awareness to say to either one of these men, what is the energy that moves through you? I, I I meet so few people who are so really cheerful like you guys, but that bus driver, and that mailman, it, the memories of these two fellows who just exuded that good cheer, it just bubbled up from years ago. So right. between Bliss Street, the bus driver, the mailman, just a little thought, because those people, I'm sure we all have had people that we have memories of, or most of us, that were of good cheer just to even think of them, that mental contact, you know, just kind of like gets those bubbles of happiness moving. Yeah. Next time, get their secret. I wanted to call on Anne McAvoy before you lost your train of thought. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I've been doing lately, I've been trying to focus more and more throughout the day on Baba. And something that I used to do came back to me and I discovered as soon as I start singing the seven names of God, I just feel really good. And so I was going around this morning doing some ordinary tasks, singing that, and it felt really good. So that's one thing to do. Beautiful. Yeah. It'll work. Yeah. Singing always helps. And Jake and Katie? Yeah, I just wanted to, to comment on how much I, I really love and can get a sense, just an inkling of the line, we begin to think in terms of timelessness rather than existing on a timeline. I mean, I, I can just, I, I catch just a, a glimpse of that from time to time, the feelings of when I catch myself in a very cheerful space. Um, and I can even feel that, that momentum carrying, not even carrying you through anything, just in just being uh, it is a timeless space. There's nothing to focus on other than the present moment. There's no thoughts to take you away into the past or the future. You're just there being. It's just a, I just, I, I love, I, I love that feeling. I love this glimpse that I get to have of this space. Beautiful. Well said, beautifully. Very nice. And Heidi? Yeah. I just wanted to share the lyrics to um, a song that I've used that kind of ties in with the um, Darwin stuff, just part, part of it. It's called Accentuate the Positive, but there's a biblical term to it. Um, Aretha Franklin sings it really beautiful, and so does Ella Fitzgerald, but these are the lyrics to some of them. You've got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and latch on to the affirmative, but don't mess with Mr. In-Between. And... Uh, one of the things that some of this teaching leads to is in order to like to choose positive over negative, you kind of have to get rid of any feeling of ambivalence first. Don't mess with Mr. In-Between. So if you kind of do that, it'll lean toward more of the positive. And music always lifts up. But I just wanted to, to share that. Yeah, beautiful. And the Bible does say, doesn't the Bible say who biblical scholars here doesn't it say, let your words be yay, yay, or nay, nay? Yes or no? Nothing in between. Yeah. 
And Baba says that too. Yeah. <clears throat> And Ira? Yes. You know, for me, my most cheerful moments or times were going to Myrtle Mayor Center in Myrtle Beach and also to uh, the Pilgrim Center in, in Abinagar and, and, and in Mayor's Yard. You know, those were the times when I was the most exalted and, and lifted up. Okay, and uh, so, you know, a lot of times you say, well, environment has nothing to do with it, but in this case, it, it does, <laughs> okay? Because the environment, the, you could feel the vibes moving up. You could actually feel the vibes moving up and just go with it. And it's like walking on air. Good, yeah, that, we yeah. all find that to be true. Yeah. <laughs> What was coming to me also was Baba's comment. I forgot how the whole thing goes about how love is is something that is contagious where you catch it from those who have it. And I've, I've noticed even putting on, um, you know, things on either the TV or music at home that carries that vibration of that cheer and that joy, how much of an effect it has on you. And in, in particular, I, I remember I'd never heard of this show because I didn't grow up in this time, but a old friend of mine on YouTube brought up some old episodes of this show in the 60s and the 70s called Soul Train, where everybody had the big afros and the colorful suits and were dancing to that funk music. And it's just, it's unbelievable how quickly you feel that upliftment from that and just I guess using techniques like that where you feel yourself down in the dumps and you know it's hard to force a smile to know that you know you can put on music or a show where people are in that you know joyful state and it's amazing like Bob has said how it's contagious you know you just you catch that that vibration so pretty unique <laughs> good yeah <clears throat> and here's a plug for Artie. <laughs> Come to Artie twice a day. <clears throat> That's all the hands up. Yeah. I got I got something to share. When when I went to India for the first time, there was one guy. There were four of us. One guy was very kind of depressed. I, I think he had just kind of gotten over his drug druggy years, and he was kind of like a low hanging cloud, and. <clears throat> We, we got to Pune and Baba's brother, Jal, kind of showed us around and all the Baba places. And three of us were ready to go on to Ahmednagar, to Maribad, and uh, this fellow stayed back. And he and uh, Jal, uh, the next day, kind of showed him uh, some of the places and everything. And they were sitting there having lunch at one point. And he said to, you know, to uh, Jal, you're so upbeat, you're so enthusiastic, you're so full of cheer. What is your secret? Because he really was. And Jal looks at him very pointedly and, and says just one word, practice. <laughs> so they worked, they worked their way up to <clears throat> that ongoing enthusiasm and, ch and cheerfulness and uh, it wasn't just necessarily a natural quality, but he, he very, very firmly said, practice. I keep reminding my, or thinking about um, in my earlier years as a waitress for many, many years, I used to make it a, a challenge um, almost every day because there was a lot of miserable people that would come into those restaurants. And I used to just make it a challenge to see if I could change their attitude with with cheerfulness so i would just really work at it you know and and most times it worked so i find that you know we can all help be uplifters of of people's um attitude if you work at it and it it was it was rather fun because some people were really miserable and i would just stick at it somehow and just <laughs> prove myself that I could do it and lo and behold there'd be a smile eventually it was it was uh enjoyable to do great lovely 
just to uh, follow on that, um, yeah, just loving others. If, if you can just think to yourself, okay, how do I love these people? How do, how do I find that way to love somebody in this context, you know, that really makes sense? So, yeah, um, and in general, just um, sometimes I give myself that challenge when I'm listening to politics and stuff like that. I'm thinking, okay, what? There's something in here I can love. What is it? No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we, like, like Martha said, we can be uplifters of other people. We're not just kind of passive victims of other people's moods. Yeah. Um, thank you all for sharing and your positive energy as well, because it is catching. Um, it really is, and Jeff um, is, you know, sort of a facilitator for that. It's really, it's beautiful. And I just want to say this. Um, of course, being here in Myrtle Beach does help. I can see that. Um, but I wasn't always cheerful, and now um, I do agree the arty is very helpful. I, I love the singing. I love joining in as much as possible, although I don't, you know, I don't want to get caught up in, you know, a ritual of doing it all the time, but I seem to be doing it all the time, and I'm like, oh, my God. But the thing is, if I really love it and I really, you know, my heart is there, then I think... That's the thing to do. And the other thing for me, um, let's say I think these meetings bring up and stir up. Bob is definitely working on us. I see that clearly. And it's not always, um, you know, uh, an easy thing. Things are coming up, and I'm not clear exactly what it is. It's more like in an emotional state. And it's passing through me. And sometimes I, I see myself and it's my face is changing or my eyes are feeling something. And I'm like, oh, geez, Baba, what are you doing? Oh, my goodness, there's all this stress. Or anxiety. And I'm like, oh, I think I understand. You are releasing and releasing a lot. And it's healing. And I think... If we can see that, and I usually end up saying, thank you, Baba. I know this is for my best. You know, I know. I trust you. I know this is really ultimately for my own good. It's to help me. And I say, thank you. Or I try to sit with him and look at his face. I look at Mara. And ultimately, I'll start to feel the love. And that reassures me. Even though you're feeling like this and this has happened, I love you and I can feel it and I can feel it from there. Now, I don't always feel it, but when I do, it's just like a release and it's like, okay, now I can go and do this. It's like I'm free. I'm like free to move easily, whereas before I feel stuck and I don't know what it is, stuck, stuck, stuck. And sometimes, you know, I'll be in a meeting and I'll feel like I've got to move. You know, I'll have to get on my treadmill. It's like there's all these energies, and I've got to move the energy, and it, it does help. So, like someone mentioned nature or hiking or just connecting with God's creation as well, without and as well within, within your own self, really, too. So thank you for listening to me, and Jay Mayer Baba. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Marilyn, beautiful. Um, I wasn't, uh, the subject had changed, but since we've, we've more, more or less finished, I, I just like to comment, uh, uh, when Bob has said I finished, I use this and when my wife and I are talking, she might feel a little bit down. I say, Bob, didn't say I did my work a hundred percent to my satisfaction, but Corona, COVID, I just didn't get that. He didn't say that. So I take that as, you know, this could get worse. It could be able to, but it's to help us wake up. 
that's one thing that I wanted to comment on, and uh, uh, that's what helps me. And then I remember what Jeff said, and I've been doing this, I've mentioned this before, I think. I just, whenever I'm feeling that anxiety and that, you know, I feel down here somewhere, I, I can feel it, and I feel, well, that's what I have to give to Bob. As a matter of fact, Bob is probably bringing this up because he always said he has to focus on us in order to, to like help us. That's why he did that thing in the movies, right? He'd sit in the movies for halfway because he said, I'm working on the people there because they're focused. So when I'm focused on that deep spot, he can, he can get it. So when I give it to him, I feel that it's helping me tremendously. And more and more, I'm getting a, a bit of taste of Baba more and more. Uh, that's my comment. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, the worries and anxieties that we feel uh, can be gifts to Baba and uh, open up more space within us as Baba dissolves them. It's a, it's a true thing. So it's, if you can't get out of the anxiety, you can give it to Baba. And, and, and if you're really good at giving it to Baba, you may rise up into cheerfulness. But even just anything that we give to Baba uh, makes more space for him to live in us. More room. And Loris? Yeah. So I'm reminded how Baba very specifically said that we're to rely on him and to be cheerful. And my, one of my favorite quotes is the new life quote, which I'd like to read. And so I won't emphasize it in it, but he wants us to wholeheartedly face all hardships with 100% cheerfulness and to rely wholly and solely on, on him. So I'll read this. The new life is endless. And even after physical death, it will be kept alive but the, by those who live the life of complete renunciation of falsehood, lies, hatred, anger, greed, and lust. And who to accomplish all this, do no lustful actions, do no harm to anyone, do no backbiting, do not seek material possessions or power, who accept no homage, neither covet honor nor shun disgrace, and fear no one and nothing by those who rely wholly and solely on God and who love God purely for the sake of loving, who believe in the lovers of God and in the reality of manifestation, yet do not expect any spiritual or material reward, who do not let go the hand of truth and who without being upset by calamities, gravely and wholeheartedly face all hardships with 100% cheerfulness and give no importance to caste, creed, religious, and religious ceremonies. This new life will live by itself eternally, even if there is no one to live it. So for me, you know, we were talking about the heart and, um, you know, if I rely on Baba, I have more room for, you know, you know, there's that whole stuff about Baba being asleep and waking him up in our hearts and um, giving our worries to him. And um, I know that when I'm really hearing somebody share from their, from, from their heart and soul about Baba and their experiences, and there, there's these periods where it's like, oh, I just feel so happy and so good and and there's times when I connect with Baba and I just feel so happy. And then, of course, I have dry spells. <laughs> but, but I get this, you know, that if I'm really giving everything to Baba, rather than just saying I'm giving it to Baba and then doing my own will during the wet day, um, but if I'm really giving everything wholeheartedly to Baba, uh, relying wholly and solely on Baba, then the cheerfulness, the joy is just is there. Um, Anyway, it's just, I'm just saying this to remind myself. <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, that's so true. And 
Daniel Stone. Yeah, there's so many great things being said here. Um, but just hearing that last quote about the new life, um, I just finished rereading uh, Glimpses, Volume 2, which is Balnatu's book, The New Life, which is just fantastic. Um, and it just, it just reminded me also of something Baba, I think, I think, I, I think Eric said this, Jeff, you may know more exactly, um, was asked, that, that somebody asked Baba, what was the secret to the new life, to living the new life? Because the cheerfulness was really such a huge challenge and uh, was really the thing that kept some people from being able to commit themselves to the new life itself was the commitment to 100% cheerfulness. And, and those were even people who had been with Baba for many, many, many years and close Mondali. But um, when he was asked, what's, what was the secret to the new life? Baba said, to keep the conversation lively. Yeah. And you know, being around the Mondali was such, was always such a great experience of that, that that was, that was what it was like being with them was sort of a very life filled interaction and, and conversation and um you know being with kitty and with erich and, and all of them uh it was just uh it, it it wasn't morose it wasn't um over it was never it, it never felt overly heavy though at the same time i know that you know i've been with kitty before when you know there were people talking about very sad things and she was very empathetic and she wasn't you know, she wasn't smiling and goofy and all that. She was really there with them in their pain. So it wasn't a superficial kind of thing um, ever. You know, I think the cheerfulness is a lot more, and I, I really loved what Prakash said about, about having a warm heart as opposed to sort of a particular facial expression. Because um, I know I've been around a lot of folks who I felt were very cheerful, but, you know, if you took a photograph of them, it would not necessarily come across as the epitome of cheerfulness. And I've also known many people who have very cheerful looking faces. And if I really listen to, to them and feel them, what they talk about is often very negative and very depressing. And, and, and it's, it's a cover up for depression. So I think it, you know, it really has to be, I, I feel like it, I have to take it really at a much deeper level about what does it really mean to be cheerful? And I think that's what I feel Darwin's getting at here is that sort of underlying sense of trust that whatever what's happening is really as you know the, it's like what Hafez says and that 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 beautiful quote that was read to read in front of baba just before he dropped the body that whatever my master does is of the highest benefit to all concerned and to really take that trust and really believe that and take that on board and to to surrender into that trust and I, I really do find that the that a lot of times this the issue of cheerfulness to me is a very binary kind of question. Is I really have choices constantly, and if I can stay conscious of the choices that I'm making, choices, do I surrender into the trust, or do I hold on to my own sense of self protection or my own sense of self will about things? So it's um, anyway. Those are. Th some random thoughts about all this. Yeah, beautifully explained, Daniel. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. And uh, I guess uh, one last hand before we go into a moment of silence. Sounds good. Marilyn? Hi. Um, before Daniel spoke, I'm trying to remember what was responding to something that um, was said about the new life quote. Um, and I was thinking, I try to really give it to Baba, but it does come back. And um, I, what I discover for my own self is that it, it is layered. Um, I'm releasing it, and it's happening. It's layer by layer. Is that, I mean... Do you, I think Jeff has said that too. People I've heard discuss it like that. It's not happening all at once. Um, right. It happens gradually. Um, or maybe for some people, it, uh, you can just sort of go into that happy place. I don't know. When I was teaching, 
I was a very, very happy, joyful teacher, and I was working with neglected and abused kids, and I suffered certain things um, from my childhood. And I didn't really ever think about myself or whatever I went through. I just empathized so deeply with the children. They became mine, and I saw Baba in them. And I would actually, you know, say his name and come into circle time, and I would just show them his picture. And then I'd say, do you know his name? And I'd go, it's Mayor Baba. And I'd say, he loves children more than anything in the whole world, especially you. And they'd be in awe. And I said, I would put this picture on the desk, and they'd gather around some of them, and they'd point, and these are little black children, or just different nationalities as well. Um, and it was beautiful. And they were not very happy, but I was so funny, I guess because, you know, I'm like a little kid. So that's my level, right? <laughs> I was joyful and cheerful, and I would make them laugh. And they would start to relax, and then they would just feel comfortable. And, you know, so I'm, I don't know why I'm saying this. It's just I had the capacity to do that <laughs> for a long time with those kids. And yet in my own personal life, I seem to um, be very heavy. <laughs> it took me a long time, and I'm still dealing with this. Um, this kind of heavy part of me that comes over me. So even though maybe I'm not, tr I'm not giving it enough. I don't know, Jeff. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Uh... <laughs> I'm trying to give it to Baba, but maybe I, I maybe I, I'm a little bit stubborn and I won't give it all. <laughs> I'll have to try harder at that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Layer by layer. Yep. Well, what do you say, Angela? Yes, let's have a moment of silence. Okay. And then, uh... and then, then anybody that wants to stay on, there's a heart-centered meditation, a uh, short one uh, that's after, um, after the silence, after we've, and, and a little bit afterwards, okay? J. Baba. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for meeting with Baba here on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank all Thank of you. you. Uh, we all make up this meeting so beautifully. You know, this moment of silence, when I get in, when I know I'm going to get into an elongated spiritual conversation with somebody, that's one thing I've adopted because they like saying a serenity prayer, but for some reason it doesn't resonate with me that much. And I says, let's just have a moment of silence. And I find it extra grounding, calm, and just talk to Bob in my own way, say, you know, what, what can I do to help out? And uh, I've adopted that, at least for the time being. And I thank you for the practice. That I just find it extra grounding and centering. Yeah, grounding and centering. So I appreciate it. Yeah, we link our silence up with his silence, which is very pal palpable. Full of silence. Oh, wow. You said a mouthful. Or country or universe full. <laughs> we didn't hear from Gabrielle at all. <laughs> yeah, I did. She was there. I had some feelings about some of this stuff, but uh, I guess I was, I am here where some of my random thoughts were that um, we all come into this life, it seems, with different karma. So, as a result, it's easier for some people to be cheerful than others because people come in with different um, where they came from and where their life leads them. And so um, 
that's one thought I had. It's not that this is great advice overall and incredible guidance. I loved what I got from every person here. And that I thought every person really is different and unique. These, but every, all this can be applied for each person in their own way. And then um, the other thought I had was for myself, and uh, it's that I think that ever since I came onto the spiritual path, I had one longing and that was it. And so that underlies any sadness and uh, sorrow that I have. And so everything else and these things that are apparently petty, this or that, really, if I track it back, it goes back to that I'm wanting to be with Baba. I want to be in India. I want to be near him. I want to feel him. I want his mandali. And so all those kind of things make me, you know, do continually make me sad. And then I'm trying to avoid those feelings. And so it is more difficult to be cheerful now than um, for me without having the Mandali, for example, and who cheered me so deeply all the time. So um, it reminded me of somebody said once that during the Kali Yuga, if you are able to uh, stay on your path, on your journey, it counts that much more because it's so difficult during the Kali Yuga. So, you know, it's harder, but the benefits in the long run are greater. So that's yeah. just a few of my thoughts there. Yeah. yeah, Mansara used to quote Baba saying, during the Kali Yuga, uh, you won't be able to see it, but Baba said, this much effort gives you this much progress, opening his arms wide. And during a golden age, with his arms wide, this much Prog uh, this much effort gives you just this much progress. Wow. So this is a time when if you stay, you know, uh, <clears throat> focused and, and determined, you can grow greatly with Baba, for sure. Hey, so let's, um, uh, let's turn it over to Stu. If, if, um, <clears throat> and uh, this is, <clears throat> a very love-filled meditation. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you ready? Any uh, Were there any further comments or? Okay. Okay, Jay Baba. So, let's just close our eyes. And start to breathe slowly and fully into your belly. And just settle into wherever you're sitting or laying. And let the world disappear a little more during this time. And bring your attention to your heart and your heart center. And it's the home of infinite love from Meher Baba. And we all carry that with us and it's around us, it's beyond us. And it's there all the time. And let's breathe in our bellies into that heart center. And notice whatever you might feel or see as you do this. It's the home of 
infinite divine love inside. And now pick someone who you would like to share this gift of infinite love with, Baba's infinite love. And it could be someone you've been in conflict with or are in conflict. It could be someone you know is struggling. It could be someone you already love and just want to share more love. And you're not trying to change them in any way or bring about any happening, but let your heart guide you. Whoever comes up, a person or a group, and you would just like to focus on sharing Baba's infinite love with them. and get an image of them. See them in your mind's eye and your heart's eye. And picture their heart center. and breathe into the image you have of them and their heart center. And now picture Baba's infinite love start to flow into their heart and their heart area. And whatever your image is, whatever you feel, I, I usually see and feel this kind of warm, golden liquid light, just deliciously pouring in and it's soothing, calming, healing, forgiving. It's cleaning. And it's filling their heart all the way to the back and the bottom. It just keeps flowing. There's no end to it. And this love is flowing to the point of overflowing. And it's flowing through their heart and all the way through them, all the way through their body and their, their whole being. And keep breathing into this flow of infinite divine love. And notice whatever you see and feel with them. And this might change as you do it.
So let's breathe into the flow of this infinite love. This soothing, healing, giving to them for another minute. And know that you can return here again and again. The infinite love is always there. And you can come back and focus the gift of this love. And now let's give thanks for being able to focus this divine love. And gently turn your attention back to your own heart and your heart center. And breathe, breathe into your heart and notice what you might see and feel. And now let's start to see Baba's infinite love flowing into our own hearts. It's the gift of his love, which is always there. We can't use it up. And keep breathing in and see this love filling our hearts, filling and soothing and cleaning, forgiving. In every little corner. and flowing through and overflowing and see this love flowing through our whole being. and filling us, filling us with its gift.
and notice whatever you might see or feel. So let's let your hearts drink from this endless source of love. For another minute and know that you can return here again and again. So let's take one more good drink of the love and give thanks for Baba's infinite love and being able to partake and share. So gently start to bring your awareness back to wherever you're sitting or laying. And take a few moments to let yourself come back. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes.
Thank you, Stuart, for such a wonderful, joyful, heartfelt guided meditation. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure, Alan. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for saying that. Oh, it was so delightful and um, so valuable. Greatly appreciated. And thanks to Jeff and Angela and all the other hosts and uh, everyone else who, who shared. Uh, it was a wonderful gathering. And uh, we'll see you at Effort and Grace again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Yeah. Thank you all. Love and blessings Same. to everyone. Thanks, Dan. Same, Bob. Same, Bob. If anybody would like to unmute and share anything after the meditation too, we welcome you. Alvin, you raising your hand? <clears throat> Hey, this is Marsha. Um, I have a Tibetan singing bowl, and I'd like to I'm starting to learn how to use it. Would you like to hear it? It's, it's really cool. I want to do it. This is for the circle of 10. This is for the seven days that it took for creation. For the five perfect masters who awakened Baba. For the number three. Say, Baba, at the time near Baba Key J. Avatar Mayor Baba TJ. Avatar Mayor Baba TJ. Yeah. Anyone else have anything to share? From the yeah, this is Peter. Um, every so often, I want to see what the benefits are of going through COVID, and it comes back to this meeting. Some of the people I've I've met in having effort and grace as a meeting on Sundays for as long as it did, it was one of the um, benefits of COVID for me. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah, sure. It's a great point, Peter. I have, uh, I had to go walk my neighbor's dog. I have to go on Sundays, unfortunately, right around quarter to seven, seven o'clock, but it was so nice to come back into this lovely meditation. I was really glad to get back in time to hear some of it. And when you said, when you're ready, open your eyes, I opened my eyes to this absolutely glorious sunset going on out my window right now. And I think it was looked extra beautiful just because this meeting's been so lovely today. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's rained here in the Midwest, so uh, the sun's out. There could be a rainbow out there somewhere. We all hope for a rainbow. It would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I you know, um, can I say a comment? It's like it's been coming back in my mind. And back in my house, there's uh, two baseball fields. And whenever I walk by it, I think about the movie, The Field of Dreams, you know, with the baseball players that came. And I said, and I'm like thinking about copies and that we've all been asleep and like we're coming out of this sleep, you know, and waking up 
it's kind of like a good analogy, I think, you know, to keep thinking about this poppies and awakening and wow, it feels so good, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like, wow, we're all here together in the same boat, you know. It's a shame that people can't get it together to stop arguing about nothing and just be more loving to each other. I'll, I'll stop the rumbling now. Okay. <laughs> I have to ground myself. <laughs> Thank you for all being here. Yeah. It's really so cool. I can't yeah. even tell you. Yeah. Janet, you Thank had you, something Marcia. to say? I, I was just going to, I was going to um, say what Peter said. I feel the same way. I mean, I, it's, it, this, this group has deepened my, um, because I mostly do Baba by myself here in Colorado, quite honestly, to have a group of people who love Baba as much as everyone does and strive so hard as we all are, all, all, all the effort and grace that we're putting into doing our lives toward Baba. And I really appreciated what you said at the end, Jeff, about the <clears throat> Bansari thing, you know, that Baba said, the little bit of the, the little bit of effort we do has a big bit of benefit right now. I just want to say I thank you. I came on really late, but um, it was nice, the part I was able to participate in. And um, I just appreciate everybody's comments. Yeah. I just feel blessed by Baba because like, I haven't been really depressed in a very long time, but in the last couple of days, I started going down the spiral, which I used to be in many, many, many years ago. And I feel like it was so perfect, the topic tonight, and it was really, really helpful and had a lot of good pointers and tips and um, inspiration to try again, just to be cheerful and not let that overcome me, which is what it's trying to do lately. Thanks. I feel the same way. I feel that way about RT, which I attend regularly. I, it's guaranteed I'll leave feeling better than <laughs> than I came. Uh, it's been a long time since I felt, you know, down for very long. It's 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 a sure sure bet almost. <laughs> you know, Stu, I decided on this thing to focus on Baba to <laughs> to give the love. You know, you say to pick somebody. Yeah. Try that lovely. sometime. <laughs> I mean, it really is. Really try that sometime. What it happened? So you... Very expansive, and I could feel just such a tangible bond of my heart with Baba's. I mean, just mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so uh, uh, deep, and it, it was way, way out of. Uh, <laughs> Out of my depth. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. And, oh, and can you... I, was see, I was seeing him a little bit. I mean, I'm talking about like actually really seeing him, but I couldn't get his full face. I was getting parts of his face. I'm talking about actually seeing, you know, like he was present, oh. not oh. not just a photograph or uh, an image, but him. But I couldn't. Um, couldn't sustain it you know i didn't have the whatever the in, in integrated consciousness to put them put them together so to speak but i got pieces of his of him oh that's wild yeah. so you're sharing sharing the love with the source of the love yeah <laughs> 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 Try it, yeah, try it sometime. It's really I will, I will. Just wanting to become a must. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, and well, all who participate. Go ahead, sir. Go, I'm sorry. I, so sorry. I was saying, it took me two weeks to move here, and for some reason, I had my birthday tomorrow, and I had to have everything in place here by my birthday, and it's like, Baba just put me here, and then it was just like, I'm here, and it's like, I feel so intense with him every minute. It's like, I can't even tell you. It's like, my whole life is like, everything that was hard has become easy, and everything that was a difficulty, it seems so, it's so unimportant. You just, I, you just gave me a gift. Like, I guess remember when they tell you about turning the key, I guess I got my key 
turned, I think. <laughs> and right on. Where did you move to, Marsha? I, in this moment, 30, I moved from the city to Vernon Hills, which is like a 37 minute ride from the center of Chicago where I live. But it was because of the pandemic, it was so much noise and I was getting so anxious I couldn't breathe. And this, my cousin's mother moved out of this wonderful condo to a nursing home and she was going to sell it. And I said, well, did you think about renting it? She said, yeah, to you. And so it was like four weeks ago and I'm here and <laughs> everything's like in its place and it's like, I've been working like crazy, but it's like my birthday tomorrow and I did everything what I was supposed to do. I'm exhausted, but I'm in, still in love with being here. That it's mm -hmm. amazing. I got all the my dog rolls around in the ground and she loves every room she's in. And I'm right next to the forest, you know, and then there's a, two baseball fields and a lake. And it's like, oh my God, I can't even believe. I'm like, is this really happening or is, am I going to lose it? You know, I'm so afraid of loss, you know, losing things all my life that. It's like I've finally been gifted like to where I wanted to be. Whoa. Well, I'm perfectly happy. And to all of you that are depressed, just start thinking about, you know, about just loving Baba and get rid of all that garbage. Because he can't, if you, like you said, if you're worrying, he won't take care of you. But now that I've surrendered to him, he has to take care of me. So as long as I do the work, I mean, I can't just say, okay, Baba, take care of him because I have mm -hmm. you. Oh, you've got to be out there doing that work because he needs us. Right now, with the world the way it is, we need to focus on like loving one another and praying. You know, just praying, and you know, it'll it'll be okay. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so I have this in my mind after my birthday. Everything's yeah. gonna they're gonna do a cure, right? <laughs> Some kind of Baba miracle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Masha. Right? Is this Etzion Becker? Happy birthday. Tomorrow, yeah. Is this Etzion? Yes, yes Neil. Yeah. Your hair is uh, your your hair's not white like mine. What what <laughs> you're looking pretty good. He's from Thank Israel. You. Yeah, just Let's happened see. to. I woke up now. It's two thirty in the morning. A uh, quarter to what? three in the morning in Israel. Wow. Yeah. Just happened to. I don't know. But, uh, I just tried to see. If, if something is going on, I didn't uh, see any schedule. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. Yeah. Beautiful That's to great. see you after. Now, Etzion, I haven't seen in many years. <clears throat> I think I saw in during 2002, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's 18 years. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Somebody must wow. have summoned him with, by sending him the love. <laughs> Anyone else uh, uh, have anything to share about uh, about the meditation that that you that you don't mind sharing? You asking me? Oh, I see, Cindy. Oh, it could be you or Cindy. Go ahead, Cindy first. Okay, I just wanted to share that um, I, I've had this experience when I've done this meditation. With, with effort and grace is that there's normally one person that will come first to me and then I think like Baba sends a whole cast of characters in so there's still that primary person but then there's so many other people that that are being used as like a conduit for the love mm -hmm. and it's it's not difficult to do because it's infinite love and we're all one but it was it's a really beautiful experience to have all these other souls you know, beings pop in and just having that love radiate like a, like, like my body is a crystal and the sun is shining through it, refracting light to many sources. Beautiful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And I also want to share one more thing. I think it's nothing short of a miracle. The conversation about how to get onto YouTube that we just had with um, Janet, like the our age people that can have that conversation now, I think that should be filmed. That was amazing that we can <laughs> guide each other like that. That's a COVID. Confuse each other. <laughs> I think it's amazing. So, did you get here in time to do the meditation? No, I just came here five minutes ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Etzion was very close with 
the um, uh, Terry Ben Shammai, who was the one person from Israel who came to see Baba in what, 56 and 58, <clears throat> would you say? 56 and Delmonico. Uh-huh. And also oh. at the center in Myrtle Beach. She also uh, came to the East-West Gathering and uh, the last Darshan. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> And I brought her back to India during 1979. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> so are you in Tel Aviv or some other city at Zion? <clears throat> I used to be living in Jerusalem for many years now. I'm living in uh, Haifa. Haifa is a ah, northern a city of, uh, it's a port, northern city of Israel. Uh -huh. We moved here for a Change, make a change, yeah, whatever. Mm. It's nice, nice, very nice place. Fairly quiet. <clears throat> I have friends from Ashkelon and uh, the place where Abraham's well is, which is a skate by mine. Huh? Yeah. They call yeah. it Be'er Sheva. Be'er Be Sheva, exactly. Mm -hmm. And two godsons from them. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> no, Stu, that was wonderful. Uh, for me, it's always nice to read these things and then to sink into a deep state of love, which is what the whole book is about, yeah. leading us to from our little individual streams into the ocean. That Baba is, yeah. So what's going on in the center now? How is it? Are you thinking about us all going to the Lagoon Cabin at night? <laughs> Usually, but uh, but uh, we we are thinking maybe after New Year. I mean, after uh, Labor Day, and then after to be on two weeks, we may open it to walking around on the center. Uh -huh. but, Boy, Baba's home has been closed for what five or six months. It's, that's who would have ever dreamed of that? Yeah. <clears throat> well, a lot of religious places closed, I guess. Yeah, around the world. I'm hoping it opens up for visitors by Christmas, by December. That would be cool. Put it that's on the wish list. Yeah. Anybody have any last uh, quote or anything? <clears throat> anything to... Well, I, do, I have a quote that I read in this book. Um, my daughter gave me the, the, the compilation, Don't oh, yeah. Worry, Be Happy, Yeah, which I love. There's a quote that says, it's just, it's just like three lines, be big, be generous, leave the rest to Baba. Yeah. <laughs> be big, yeah. He would say, be big in heart. I have a question for you guys. What do you think uh, that um, Baba meant by lively when he said, keep the conversation lively? The quote that Dan Stone mentioned. Yeah. Well, uh, I know. <clears throat> Baba used to say that to Bao when he did his writings, make him interesting and lively. <clears throat> you know, not dour and somber, but <clears throat> keep uh, keep things lively. I mean, Baba liked liveliness around him. If you if you listen to uh, <clears throat> some of those audio tapes from the barn mm -hmm. uh, they've, that they played recently. I mean, everybody is having a great time. It's not like <clears throat> there's the master and everybody is silence hanging on his every word. Everybody was <laughs> looked like they were having a great time. It sounded like they were having a great time. It, there was nothing somber about it mm -hmm. or religious or spiritual about it, you know. Yeah, What's that? Um, there's a song that Misha Rutenberg sings on YouTube about don't worry, be happy, da -da -da -da, you know, 
and the first to do this and, and it's like that follows along a little bouncing ball. It's really it's really fun. <laughs> Will mm-hmm. you will you play a song for us on your guitar, you, Jeff? <clears throat> oh, maybe another time. <laughs> Jeff is a master of a lively conversation. I, I mean, imagine keeping it's it's hard hosting even my little bit at the RT. It's hard keeping it going, Jeff. Is, <laughs> and he has, you know, he, it's amazing, Jeff, that you carry well, on the way you do. Well, I don't know this. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Finished it. You mentioned something yeah, about finished. audio tapes from the barn. Can yeah. you elaborate on that? <clears throat> well, you know, the weekly uh, report or whatever newsletter they have from the center went up uh-huh. with a tape of uh, Baba in the barn in 1958. Ah, uh, uh, okay. And boy, yeah. you, I mean... People were making wisecracks and everything. It wasn't anything of what you would call uh, uh, <clears throat> a serious atmosphere about it. People were having fun. Yeah. Nice. I haven't kept up with those. You can go back. You can go back and it's probably in your computer somewhere. Yeah. In yeah. <clears throat> Stu, anything to say before we... Um, Head off into uh, out of the uh, ether into the <laughs> the gross. Just a comment. Somebody saying um, they're not very good at doing the meditation, but there there really is no wrong, and I think you're probably doing a lot better than you think. And just and keep <laughs> doing it. The the love is there. No. I know it's great. It's. It's transforming. <laughs> you know, you can feel like, uh, and then you do that, and you just feel like all oh, is waste and listed, you know? Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. <clears throat> so, Jim, where's Ann? Where's she up to? Mm. Ann wasn't feeling well this, tonight, so. Uh-huh. Well, give her our best. Yeah. I will. I will. Thank you for being concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, I wanted to encourage Etzion to join us in the daytime like with at RT. <laughs> Mikal is regularly on RT, so it, it must fit your time better to uh, that you can check with her about what time that is. Morning RT. Um, yeah. I hope to see you there. Thank you. I don't have your schedule. I don't know when to join. Oh, well, you got on here, right? Uh, yeah. If you can, if you can get on this, you can get on everything. But Betty, exactly might, the same way. But I don't uh, know the timings. I don't know the the future schedule. Or you have because I understood you have something like this. So I don't know where. Okay. I'm I'm Mayor Bobo's circle of friends. I will copy the tab. Okay. Yeah. She'll put it on uh, the chat, and you can. Yeah. You can get it, Etzion. It's same time every morning, uh, which may call always come. I think evening is too late for you, but it's our same time, seven days a week. Easy to remember. For you, I don't know what time that is. All right. So if you click on this link that I just put in the chat, um, it will show you the calendar list view and... Um, Click on any event. And of course, you have to. This is uh, Eastern time. I don't think our calendar is smart enough to change it to international. It should. <laughs> it must be at 4 30 if you're seven hours ahead of us now. Huh? I'm three. No, I was at three in the morning now. Right. So it's uh, eight o'clock here. And not seven hour, you're seven hours ahead. So 4 30 would be RT, morning RT. 8 p.m., yeah. Mm. Here. 4.30 in, in your morning, in Israeli morning? Or even no. afternoon? Afternoon. Oh, no, that's perfect. Oh. <clears throat> so how do, do I get to it? Just as I got now? Yes. yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Same idea. It looks so sleepy, but it's o- Only now and then we change the password, but we won't let you know when that is, so you'll be surprised. <clears throat> 
Damn. You okay, so I'm going to. I'm going to uh, go uh, eat something for dinner. Oh boy! All right. I'll see all of you folks. All right. Hey, Bob. Thank everybody. Hey, Bob. Thank you. Great Thank life. Thank you, everybody. Very helpful. Bye. -bye.